dream, this is your ear. Is anybody hearing? You are sold for 30 pieces of silver. I come to declare by the word of God, they put you somewhere in a grave. Listen to this. Death cannot hold you there. There is, there is, there is panic all over this nation. The spirit that is ruling right now all over this nation and not just this nation but the nations of the world is the spirit of fear and where there is the spirit of fear the, the, we have troubled waters in other words our spirits our minds are not settled and when we are that way there is no way we are going to hear God there is no way we are going to do things the way they ought to be done. And the Bible comes and says, Our God will keep you, He will keep me in perfect peace when we stay focused on Him. The word is focused. He is our refuge. He is our fortress. We declare our country will be safe. Our God will save us. More than anything else, his faithfulness is going to be our defense now. The devil is a created being. He's a creature. Did you hear what I'm saying? Everything he does is monitored. Did you hear what I'm saying? Everything he does is monitored. And God will get everything that he is doing. And whatever you are doing. And work out. He will spin something good out of it. That's why I hate it. When we glorify the devil. Like they are equal with God. Or he is slightly more powerful than God. Oh no. The Bible says the one who forms the weapons and the weapons are all in the hands of God and there is no weapon that is formed against you that shall ever prosper because God can monitor all of them. We would deep ourselves in the blood. The blood of the Lamb. The blood. The blood of the covenant. The blood that redeemed us. The Bible says through the blood we have redemption. What is redeem? Redeem is to buy from the slave market. That's what it means. What am I saying? The enemy is after two things. Your salvation. For you who is born again. And your destiny. He wants to preach to you. He wants to speak to you. He wants to put fear in you so that you believe that the God who saved you somehow, somehow cannot get you through this time. That's what he is after. So that you start asking yourself, after all, why did I get saved? After all, why, why, why? Why did I give my life to Jesus? Where is God at this time? Let's remember, as long as we take our lives and put it in the hands of our Father, He says, I know the thoughts I have for you, says the Lord. They are not the thoughts of evil. They are the thoughts of welfare, to give you a good future and hope. You have a future. I'm going to look at you in the eye and tell you you have a future. Once again, thank you for joining us in this service from wherever you are from the world. I really thank God for this platform whereby we are able from this platform to come to you live from our home. We bless God for the brief we had on Wednesday. And I'm sure you are very well prepared with the elements of the Holy Communion today to 
together with your family because it's going to be wonderful. It's just going to be awesome. I can feel the presence of God already in this room. God is just about to explode in your life. That's, that's why I specifically told you to have the elements of the Holy Communion together with your family, your spouse, your children, your relatives, the ones that are living with you during this time of quarantine. At the same time, I really want to bless the name of the Lord for the many, many, many people who are sending us not only their prayer requests, but also their praise reports, like this lady from Gegu. Her son had gone missing for some time. We got a praise report that the son is back, and many others that I'll be mentioning if time allows. This time I want us to pray, and then we go into a session of worship. Already mom is here, Maggie is here, Josh is here with a keyboard. We want to go and worship God. I say many times, praise and worship is personal. You can do it wherever you are because it is you connecting with your God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for everybody who is going to listen to us tonight because by listening to us, they will be listening to the Holy Spirit who is in us, who is walking through us. And we pray today that the grace of God and the spirit of revelation will explode in every life tonight that will be at the sound of my voice and even many others that will listen thereafter because God, you are not limited to time. I want to thank you for this time because of this nation and the, the health workers above all the government that is doing their best to contain this virus, my prayer is that you will give them the wisdom and the right strategies so that this animal, this virus can disappear from this nation quickest. We want to go back to our normal lives. We want to go back to work. We thank you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Mom, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Iyo damu ya Yesu ni ushindi wangu. Iyo damu ya Yesu ni ushindi wangu. Hallelujah. Ni ushindi wangu. Hallelujah. Ni ushindi wangu. Iyo damu ya Yesu imenita kaza. Iyo damu ya Yesu imenita kaza. Hallelujah, imenita kaza. Hallelujah, imenita kaza. Ioda mu ya Yesu, ni ushindi wangu. Ioda mu ya Yesu, ni ushindi wangu. Hallelujah, ni ushindi wangu. Hallelujah, ni ushindi wangu. Nataka tumabudu buwana na kumpigia makofi. Hata tukiwa katika kwetu nyumbani kwa maana najua ya kwamba hakuna kitu kingine chenye kitatupigania isipokuwa hii damu ya Yesu. Ni kweli madaktari wanasaidia. Serikali inasaidia. Lakini kuna damu ya Yesu ambayo wa Kristo tunatazama. Kwa hivyo naomba tuugane pamoja tuibe hiyo hiyo damu ya Yesu ni makao yetu. Haleluya. Iyo damu ya Yesu ni makao yangu Iyo damu ya Yesu ni makao yangu Haleluya ni makao yangu Haleluya ni makao yangu Iyo damu ya Yesu ni ushindi wetu Iyo damu ya Yesu ni ushindi wetu Haleluya 
ni ushindi wetu haleluya ni ushindi wetu hiyo damu ya Yesu uponyaji wetu hiyo damu ya Yesu uponyaji wetu haleluya uponyaji wetu haleluya uponyaji wetu hiyo damu ya Yesu imenitakaza hiyo damu ya Yesu imenitakaza haleluya imenitakaza haleluya imenitakaza hiyo damu ya Yesu ndiye gao letu hiyo damu ya Yesu ndiye gao letu haleluya ndiye gao letu Haleluya ndiye kao letu tuabudu damu ya Yesu eh Haleluya hiyo damu ya Yesu kwa maana ya damu hatuogopi kamwe eh kwa maana ya damu ya Yesu tuna ushindi kabisa eh uh, hiyo damu ya Yesu damu ya dhabihu msalabani damu ya dhabihu msalabani eh. inaokoa Kenya inaokoa ulimwengu imetuokoa sisi eh. katika hii katika huu ugonjwa katika hii upepo ushindi tunaye Hiyo damu ya Yesu ni ushindi wetu Hiyo damu ya Yesu ni ushindi wetu Haleluya ni ushindi wetu Haleluya ni ushindi wetu Hiyo damu ya Yesu ndiye gome letu Hiyo damu ya Yesu ndiye gome letu Haleluya ndiye gome letu Haleluya ndiye gome letu hiyo damu ya Yesu ni makao yetu hiyo damu ya Yesu ni makao yetu haleluya ni makao yetu haleluya ni makao yetu hiyo damu ya Yesu ni ushindi wetu hiyo damu ya Yesu ni ushindi wetu Haleluya ni ushindi wetu Haleluya ni ushindi wetu Yes Lord we thank you Father Raba na malala bagura ikeni raba na malala bashanta raba na malala bagura Oh raba na malala bagura ikeni sheni raba na malala bagura ikeni bagura Jehovah reka raba na maganda raba na malala bagura ikeni sheni raba na maganda Father we thank you Lord because of your blood oh God Shele bere le bagura ikeni bagura ikeni bere bere le bayanda Shika raba na malala bagura ikeni shika ya la bana mala la baganda yo gova rei de la grey kele bele bele le bo reba na mala la bashika la bana mala la baganda oh reba 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 na baganda la bana mala la baganda yo buya ko ya nena mema baba yo buya ko ni ushidi wetu baba yo buya ko ni makao yetu Hallelujah damu yako ina 
kaza Damu yako Yesu imeniweka huru Damu yako ina takaza Damu yako ushindi wetu haleluya Damu yako ushindi wetu Damu yako Yesu imeniweka huru damu yako ushindi wetu damu yako nikibirio utukuke damu yako nikimbilio damu yako Yesu imeniweka huru damu yako nikibirio damu yako makao yangu haleluya damu yako makao yangu damu yako Yesu imeniweka huru damu yako maka o yangu damu yako uponyaji wangu haleluya damu yako uponyaji wangu damu yako yesu imeniweka huru damu yako uponya jiwangu the blood of Jesus on the cross it was to set me Let me free. I am free. It was to set me free. I am free now. It was to set me free. It was to set me free. The pain of Jesus on the cross it was to set me free the pain of Jesus on the cross it was to set me free was to set me free oh it was to set me free hallelujah it was to set me free it was to set me was to set me free it was to set me free i am free it was to set me free oh it was to set
Once again, thank you so much for all of you who are tuning, tuning in. I can see people, all the people from inside this country, outside this country. Mary from Qatar, George from Dubai, somebody from Mero, Thika Road, Dagureti. We, we, we really thank God for each one of you. I want us to dig into the Word of God right now. And I want to speak to you tonight on this one thing. Child of God, trust God and you'll be safe. I want to say you are safe. You are safe. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5, God said he would be the wall of fire around Jerusalem. His habitation. And you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. I come to declare you are safe. And I'm going to show you tonight why you are safe as long as you are going to believe God. Let me say this. There were ten plagues that hit Egypt. Ten of them. And because of time, I want to remind you of Exodus chapter 9, verse 4, where God told the children of Israel, he told Moses, by extension, the whole, you know, num the whole people of Israel, I'm going to hit this land with a plague. And all livestock are going to experience what I would call destruction. But in verse 4 he says he's going to bring a distinction. He will bring a distinction. Between the livestock of the Egyptians. And the livestock of the children of Israel. In Goshen that plague never came. Never came. God brought a distinction. And I'm going to say right now, God will bring a distinction. Please listen to this. Simply because coronavirus is devastating country, other countries. We hear of China. We hear of Italy. We hear of Spain. U.S. is not far from there. Simply because it is sweeping people to their graves. That does not mean that Kenya, where you and me live, and where you are living right now, whatever you are listening to me, as an individual, that does not mean that it is automatically going to sweep you away. God is going to bring us distinction. What am I saying? I still remember God bringing a plague. It's still in Exodus chapter 9. In verse 10, the Bible says, if you look at verse 8, verse 10, up to verse 10, God told Moses, Moses, I want you to go and get suit from the furnace. Here I have a prophetic word for somebody. The furnace was made out of bricks. Who made the bricks? The Jews. And God used soot from the bricks that the Egyptians forced them to make to bring boils all over the land. I'm saying to you, someone stole from you, robbed you, somebody left you for dead, but I have a word for you, 
God has not forgotten you. God had not forgotten what the children of Israel had done to the Egyptians. He said, you forced them to make the breaks. From what those breaks will hold, I'll bring boils. I will bring boils. And that's what he did. But watch this. This is the, where the distinction comes in. The magicians who tried to do that and they, were not, they could not be able to do that started running away from Moses because the boils were all over their body. But Moses' body was intact. I want to declare by the word of God, believe God, believe God, you will be intact. The boils can sweep everyone else. But I, that is not an automatic thing that it will sweep you with them. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God. We hear coronavirus now is in many counties. Simply because it is in our county does not mean it is in your house. Trust God. Do your best. To observe high level hygiene like I've been advocating here. Keep safe. Keep distance. Social distance as they are calling it. But at the end of the day I want you to trust God to keep you safe. He did it with the children of Israel. He did it with Moses. Moses was very close to those Egyptians that were running away from him. But the boils, oh, I mean, they could not touch that man of God. You are a man of God. You are a woman of God. You are bought with a price. Believe God. I want to tell you something. The way you came into the kingdom is the way you operate in the kingdom. You came, you entered the kingdom of God by faith. The just shall live by faith. And the way you entered, that's the way you operate in the kingdom. You are in the kingdom, now operate by faith. The just shall live by faith. Live as a man, a woman, believing God to keep you safe. I'll say that again. Believe God to keep you safe. I'll say again, believe God to keep you safe. Don't allow fear, fear in your life to open a door for the enemy. The Bible says in the same Exodus 9, Exodus chapter 9, in verse 26, after God had said that he is going to bring a plague, a, a plague of hailstone, I mean hails all over, all over Egypt. The Bible comes and says none of those hails could touch Goshen. Listen to this. Goshen was a place in Egypt where the Israelites lived. They were, given their, they were given that by Joseph. But I'm saying by the word of God. You live in God. The Bible says he that dwells in the secret place of the most high. Shall abide under the shadow of the mighty. Simply because there is hell. In other places does not mean it will come to you. It's not automatic. Believe God to be safe. I'm saying again. Believe God to keep you safe. I'm going to say again. Believe God to keep the boils and the hills, the, you know, the thunder, the lightnings far away from you. The other day we, have a, a, we had a very unusual rain here. There was thunder, there was lightning everywhere. What happened? That lightning did not come to this house. Did it? We heard the roar of the thunder. 
but it did not come to this house. In the same way, the God who kept us safe will keep you safe. What am I, am, am I saying? Fear is the, of the enemy. In fact, fear is a bigger enemy than coronavirus itself. We have a demonically energized fear all over this nation and the many nations in the world that is telling people simply because coronavirus is in Kiambu, it must come to my house. No way. I'll show you in a bit. No way. In the name of Jesus. No way. In the name of Jesus. Jump with me to Exodus 11 verse 7. What are you finding? God told the children of Israel, this time, I'm going to bring one plague that will make Pharaoh send you, send you out of this country. And by the way, let me show you. All the plagues of Egypt had two, two major objectives. Objective number one is to prove to all the Egyptians that they, all the gods they had were nothing compared to the sovereign God of the children of Israel. There is no other God other than our God. Watch this. Number two, it was to build, it was meant, all those plagues were meant to build faith of the children of Israel in their God. They had a long journey to go to Canaan. And God knew, unless they see what I can do, uh, the, 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 these guys are going nowhere. And I'll tell you something, during this time of pandemic, this is when we need to dig into our faith in God more than any other time. He will show himself strong on your behalf. That's what he told us at the beginning of this year, that he will show himself strong on your behalf, on my behalf. He will do that. Bible says, God told the children of Israel, this time round, I am going to strike all the fast bonds of Egypt. But verse 7 says, In the families of the children of Israel, not even a dog would echo the wailing in the land. Not even a, a dog would bark at, you know, anybody. Can you imagine? There is wailing, there is crying, there is weeping everywhere in the land. The dogs on the other side, in the land of Goshen, and the people they are in, oh, they are snoring. They are safe. They are safe. I want to come and de declare to you, you will be safe this time. You will be safe. And by the way, I will say it again. And again, simply because coronavirus has devastated other countries, that does not mean that it will automatically wipe off this country. No way. We are praying. There are so many prayer movements that have rose up in this country. We already have a 24-hour chain of prayer initiated by, among others, Apostle Kimani. And we thank God for the many, many, many pastors, bishops, reverends, who have rallied people of all, from all denominations to rise up and call upon God for our country this time. Our God hears prayer. Our God hears prayer. Let me come now to the personal level. God, after God showed himself, showed himself to the children of Israel by bringing a distinction of this one kind. When everybody else was being wiped off by the plagues on the other side of Egypt, they were safe. God told them, now I want it personal. That's why we have these elements of Holy Communion. I hope you have them. I, I, I hope you are sending in your prayer requests as well because we will be praying for you at the end of this, you know, platform, I mean, of this program, towards the end of this program. 
rather. Now, God told the children of Israel, I want you now to experience my personal protection. Personal. Personal. This is where we come now to uh, Exodus chapter 12. And then if you look at verse 7, the Bible comes and tells me, God told the children of Israel to select. They select one lamb per family. If the family is too small, let them bring some few people. And, you know, some other sm uh, smaller families so that they, they join together. And they were to slaughter that lamb. They were to eat it with unrivened bread. And this is what he told them. You will keep it for 14 days, but that's two weeks. After those two weeks, you slaughter it and it put the blood on the lintels of your doors. Watch this. It's personal. Now it has come down to the family level. The Bible says he told them at midnight. I am going to strike the firstborn of every Egyptian. Including the firstborn of animals. My goodness, I can't imagine the kind of weeping that was in that land. And the Bible comes and says something that I love so much. So, so, so much. He tells them, when, when you get hold of that lamb and start keeping it for 14 days, that will mark the calendar. That will mark your calendar as the beginning of, all you, of, of, of your years. I want to say by the word of God, everything that has gone there before no longer counts now. What will happen from tonight is what counts. You are opening a new chapter in your life. This family here, we are opening a new chapter in our lives. The Bible comes and says, God told them, on the 14th day, that night I will strike the firstborns of Egypt. Beginning with the Pharaoh himself, the firstborn of Pharaoh. They considered the Pharaoh a god. So the son of their god died. I'll say that again. He died and never rose from the dead. The son of God died on Calvary and rose again from the dead. That's the difference. That is the difference. Any child, anybody they sacrifice out there dies forever. But the Son of God was sacrificed for you and for me. He rose from the dead and today he is alive. He is alive for you. He is alive for me. The Bible says that night there was wailing because all those children, the firstborns were dead. By the following morning, Listen to this. Pharaoh was telling them, get out of here. Get out. Get out. Anything you want, take it, but get out. Listen to this. The reason why none of the children of Israel died. Not even a dog barked there. Watch this. Not even a dog wailed there. Hailstone fell. Even the dogs were safe. Listen to this. Darkness came in Exodus 10.23. There was light in Goshen. Now the firstborns of all the Egyptians are dead. But once again, my goodness, once again, all the children, the firstborns of the Jews were safe. Not even a dog wailed. 
Even the firstborns of the dogs were safe. I come to tell you tonight, God loves you. God has an agenda for your life. He has a purpose for your life. He will preserve you. How is he going to preserve you? The Bible comes and tells me, Gee, God told the children of Israel to put that blood on the rintos of their doors. That's what we'll do. The lintos of their doors, the doors, the entry points. We will put that blood on every door in our lives and close it. Every door of sickness, every door of infection, every door of lack, every door of depression. Whatever door the enemy may use, we are going to close it tonight with the blood of Jesus. Listen to this. God told them, when the angel of death would be passing by, every time he came and saw the blood, he would take off, go to another house. I want to declare by the word of God, those viruses will go to another house. They will go to another locality. We declare the blood of Jesus upon the borders of this country. Upon every county, upon every single location, upon every sub-county, whatever they call them today, we declare a sprinkling of the blood of Jesus, which speaks better than the blood that, you know, of the, go, you know, of the lambs that they shed. In the land of Egypt. Listen to this. The blood of Jesus. Is the blood of the only son of God. And the Bible says. There is no other sacrifice for our sins. That can be given. It has already been given. That sacrifice. Has been given for our sins. And that's the blood. We will put upon the doors. Of our lives. Every single door that the angel of death will want to knock on. In fact, he will not have time to knock on them because the blood will be on the door, the rintos of the door. We declare tonight in the name of Jesus, that's what we will do. That's exactly what Jesus told us. When he was leaving this earth, he took his disciples and then he told them, you know, I, I, I want to have Passover with you tonight before I go and be sacrificed to become the Passover. I, I want to show you how you will be activating the Passover that I will become when I go to the cross. And that night, he, you know, he took bread, he took uh, the, 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 the cup, and then he told them, as often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. Remember what I did for you. I paid for your sins. I became sin for your lives. I became sin for you. By my words, I paid the penalty for your sickness and diseases. Remember what I did for you. And when you remember, tell that angel of death he is to keep away from Goshen. He is to keep away from your houses. He is to keep away from your children. I, that's why I asked you, I requested you to have your children with you tonight as we partake of this Holy Communion. Watch this. We tell the enemy, you don't belong here. You don't belong here. Why? We dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Psalm chapter 91. Listen to this. And because God is our refuge, the Bible says he covers us with his wings. 
Watch this. Malachi 4.2, the Bible says, For them that fear the Lord, the Son of Righteousness, Jesus, who arise with healing in his wings. You are hidden where the power to heal you is already at work. I'll say that again. You are already hidden under the wings of the Son of Righteousness. And those wings are holding the healing power to cure every germ, every disease. Romans 8, 2, the Bible says, you have been set free from the law. There is a law of death. There is a law of sin. You have been set free. I have been set free from that law. We declare to that spirit of death. Listen to this. It's a spirit. Why do I say that? Healing always comes and passes through your spirit, through your soul, and it is manifest into your body. We declare to that spirit you call coronavirus, whatever it is, it's a kind of flu, we declare to it, there is a power in us, greater is he that is in us, in me, in you, than he that is in the world. We declare we are safe. I want you to believe God to be safe. Believe God to be safe. Refuse fear. The just shall live by faith in God. What God can do, what God has, listen to this, and what I mean, and who God is. God said, I am the Lord that heals you. You are safe. Your family is safe. Believe God. Believe God to protect you more than the Santalizers, and they are good. I have a, a ton of them in the house. I have some in the car. Believe God more than anything else to keep you safe. So, right now, what I want us to do is to activate that power of resurrection. To activate that power that destroyed the power of sin, the power of sickness and disease, the power of the devil, Satan himself, that power we activate it through the Holy Communion. I want to believe you have the elements with you. Keep your prayer requests coming. We, we thank you for joining us from wherever you are in the world. I want you to prepare your family now with the elements of the Holy Communion so that we can activate the power. And tonight, if you are able, I want you to take some anointing oil, anoint your doors, Anoint the gate and tell the enemy there is no way here. This is another Goshen. You can't come here. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and just like the boils could not touch the body of Moses, coronavirus, you are not touching me in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. I declare that you are not touching my family. In the name of the Lord. Simply because you are, you, you, you are that devil. That is moving to and through, or to and fro. Throughout the whole earth. And throughout, I mean, and in many, many, many counties. That does not mean you must come here. No. In the name of Jesus, let's pray. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you. 
as we activate by way of what Jesus instructed us to be doing that power that power that power that crushed sin crushed sickness crushed crushed Satan once and for all for each one of us bible says on the very night jesus was crucified he took bread he broke he gave thanks he broke it and said this is my body that is broken up for you we thank you tonight my father that the body of jesus was broken so that ours can remain whole and even during this time of coronavirus I want to declare that our bodies will remain whole. Our bodies will not be broken by viruses. And even the sickness that are in our bodies right now, whoever is suffering and is partaking of this holy communion with us, that power that crushed sickness through the stripes of Jesus Flow now, flow now, flow now, flow now to everybody as they partake of this holy communion in the name of Jesus. I break the back of the devil in the name of Jesus. I speak to every virus, to every bacteria. I speak to every germ. You come close to us, the power of the Holy Ghost strike you dead in Jesus name even as we anoint our doors it is a sign that you are not allowed here in the name of Jesus as we anoint our gate you are not allowed to come anywhere near here in the name of Jesus you are not allowed to touch our children father protect the children protect the children whatever they are my god the children in the name of jesus and break fear from them in the name of jesus give them a revelation that they are safe with you in the same manner jesus you took the cup and you give thanks and said this is the cup of my new covenant that will mean i pour my own blood to seal it Jesus it's a fact is the truth is a reality you shed all your blood all of it all of it every drop to give us life because life is in the blood we declare to the angel of death watch this Jesus poured all his life to give us life He rose from the dead to give us life. He gave us resurrection life. We will live to tell of the glories of God. We speak to coronavirus, you are sh- you are moving shadow. You are just a shadow moving through this country. And we command you to accelerate your exit. in the name of Jesus on account of the life that Jesus shed for our lives in this country we bless the government we bless the medical te- teams the medics wherever they are we thank you for what they are doing but my god we ask of you you are the giver of life protect us you protected the children of Israel 10 major plagues hit that country and they, they were unaffected will you do it for us tonight will you do it for this nation we beseech you in Jesus name all right now take the 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 the, the bread just a piece just a piece thank you jesus Right where do I place this you you pick it from here okay get get yours 
Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you get a bigger piece? We have a whole bread here. the blood when I see the blood I will pass I will pass over you when I see the blood when I see the blood when I see the blood Thank you for this bread. My God, who remember the body of Jesus, the body that he gave. He became like one of us to die for us and set us free from he who had the power of death and that Satan. We are free. We are free. We are free from the fear of death. We are free. And I speak healing. Healing from the wings of the Son of Righteousness to be our portion now, all days of our lives, in Jesus' name. Let's partake the bread in communion. Father, your son took the cup and you remember he poured all his blood, all of it, so that we may have life and have life in abundance. Right now in the name of Jesus, as we partake of this cup, we declare we have life and life in abundance. Our children have life. This nation has life and life in abundance. All manner of plagues, locusts, coronavirus, and whatever, whatever other viruses, hear the word of the Lord. We declare our houses we declare our bodies another Goshen. After all, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We declare the life, that, that power that rose Jesus from the dead. Quicken our lives. Make our lives alive more than ever before. In Jesus' name, let's partake the cup in communion. Hallelujah, when I see the blood. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. When I see the blood 
de hablar When I see the blood When I see the blood I will pass, I will pass over you again I want to pray for you I know we will not be able because of time to pray for individual requests that are coming through but be assured that this prayer will be more than anything you have ever experienced Plus, our pastoral team will be able to join you during the week and call you personally to pray for you because we love you and we care for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare everyone hearing me right now by the word of the Lord, we are saved. We are safe in your hands. Jesus, you said there is nobody who can take us away from your hands. I declare as individuals, we are safe. As families, we are safe. Provide for each one of us. My God, you said the family that isn't able to afford the alarm We'll have another family come in for them. I pray that during this time, we will be able to come in for others. Help us, Lord. Help us, help us, help us. Help us, Jesus. Provide for your people. Support your people. Uphold your people during this time. Thank you for your healing waves that are going to every part of this world. I bless you tonight in Jesus' name. Once again, this is the time that we showed our love towards one, one another more than ever before. Pastors, bishops, reverends, Lead us, lead us, lead us in our churches. I know there is a group you lead. How about making sure that you call your group at least once a week? You call everybody in your group once a week. It's a sacrifice, yes, but I don't think it's a big, big, big sacrifice compared to the kind of encouragement, the prayers that you will pray with them, so that they can be able to at least make it for the next day, next week, next month. And this whole thing will be over sooner than we know. Because our God cares. Let, 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 let's come in for one another. Let's call one another. Let's encourage one another. Some, some people are very lonely wherever they are quarantined. Very, very lonely. Call them. Once again, thank you for tuning in. Bless you. 
See you on Friday at 5 for another brief, special brief, and God bless you. Take care. Keep safe. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Ooh.